What is the one thing that you will just want to tell them like randomly? <laughs> Don't listen to my doctor wa ukonje hanta. Today here I have with me a consultant nutritionist who's going to take us through you know the journey uh, the journey of uh, introducing solid foods to our babies and I'm going to let her introduce herself to tell her to let her tell her uh, to tell us who she is and what she does and uh, from there on we can go about you know giving out the knowledge <laughs> so we ni karibu Hi guys my name is Winfred and Linda I am a consultant nutritionist uh, with a couple of years experience. Uh, I have interacted with children a couple of times and I honestly love the journey. Yes, thank you Winnie. So we're going to actually go talk about, uh, I've been told it's not winning anymore, it's actually complementary feeding. I didn't know. We, we're going to talk about complementary feeding and uh, share maybe, uh, be able to share maybe a, a just a, you know, a simple meal plan for various, you know, from the six months old to maybe the, uh, the one, the toddlers we have. In, and basically, before we start, basically, uh, we both we all understand what complementary feeding is. Basically, yeah, I hope everybody <laughs> understands what com what complementary feeding is. Uh, however, for those people who are not aware, it's uh, weaning children off breastfeeding to some solid foods. So, according to WHO, you're supposed to breastfeed your child exclusively for six months, and then you can start introducing solid foods after six months after six months we wait for the six months or the beginning of the six months uh <laughs> the best description we always had a problem with that when who brought uh, brought it up that children are supposed to be breastfed for six months so people had so many questions including me is it when we start the six months or after the, the six, six months, months yeah always the question but uh according to that you are supposed to start winning food on the 181th day so it's after now completely after the six months. six months oh yeah so i'm a new mom maybe i'm just um we, we it's usually very funny uh as a new mom it's the same as a second mom is the same third is the yeah. same i don't know it's just like you're beginning another journey over and over and over yeah. again so uh what are the various techniques techniques that someone can start or nini we uh, start to actually introduce foods to the baby um one thing i have experienced with mothers they always tend to either introduce the children too early or too late and all this brings uh, so much uh, problems as the children grow, mm -hmm. especially when they are past one year. Mm -hmm. This is when the trouble starts to manifest. <laughs> yeah. So when you start winning your child on the 181th day, we start with the regulars like porridge in our i like to basic base this conversation to the foods that we have locally mm -hmm. because um some some guidelines or some books will tend to give something else. give some foods which are not in our kenyan market yeah, because we use yes so in our local kenyan market we give porridge in most cases mm -hmm. but because the child is very small uh and um the digestive system is not well developed. We mm. are starting to win for the first day. Of course, you wouldn't want to give something that's very, very um, nutrient dense or very bulky for the for the for the gut. Mm -hmm. So, if you give porridge, then you have to probably just sieve it to have just the 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 uh, the remains mm. or the residue removed, especially for the first or second day. So do you sieve it, you know, when you're cooking porridge, you, you yeah. cook the porridge completely and then you sieve it or um, when you're mixing the, um, the flour? When you cook, after cooking, then you can sieve it or alternatively you can make it very, very light. Because a, lo a lot of uh, this uh, porridge that, in the, that is in the local market can mm -hmm. make the baby constipate. Oh, so yeah. we also don't want to deal with constipation, especially that this is our first day that we are starting to win. Mm -hmm. So we would want to give something that's very less bulky for the gut. Mm -hmm. So either you make your porridge very, very light, 
for the baby to be able to take it without uh, ending up ending up having con constipation. Mm -hmm. Or you can just cook sometimes when there's a picker and uh, unapata the, the porridge is not the way you want it. Yeah. yeah? Because it tends to solidify mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. So you can save it to be able at least to accommodate the child's gut mm -hmm. for the first few days when you're starting to win. On the porridge thing, um, I think, uh, I don't know, do we, we, when we are having a baby, we have porridge, we tend to, you know, just mix it either with breast milk or just normal milk. Is it something recommended during that period when you're starting out or you just give it, uh, we should, because that is something we've, we've seen our parents do. Yeah. We usually do what we've seen yes, being done. Yes, 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 yes. There is a good question. Uh, most mothers, I, ha I have had fight with mothers who do that. Um, that is the first fight I usually have with mothers, milk in porridge. There's something called chelation, so the nutrients in porridge and nutrients in milk, milk might tend to interact and this baby will not be able to absorb either the calcium or porridge. the iron that's present in the, 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 the foods. Yes. So we, we don't... Another problem, uh, another fight that I always have with mothers when it comes to porridge is <laughs> them giving begusaba or begutano. Ah, but that is what, you know, that is what we've been told. Yes, I know that is what we've And then been we think told. it's a bit, you know, nutrition. Actually, nutrition. Yes, 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 yes. Nutrition that is That is one fight we've had. Another, another fight we've had is convincing mothers that you can breastfeed for six months <laughs> without giving anything else. So the fact that people have been doing this, my mother will always ask me, "Nasi wewe ni likoanza kukupea wuzuki wa three months." You see, actually we give even juices. If, yes. if you look at YouTube, you'll find yes. that people are giving juices. Yes. They yes. give options yes. on how to. When we start, as, we start as early as four months. Yeah, those are some of the things that I think I am working towards and making this known that you don't need mbegusaba, you don't <laughs> need mbegutan, you just need to. From the book, from your maternal, from your, from your matern, maternal booklet that mm -hmm. you you're given as a mother when you start clinics, at the back page it's written: you only need two cereals for weaning. Okay. That's it. So we start with porridge, and then we go to now. What is the process now until we get now to the solid foods? Now, for the first few months, which is from six months to eight months, mm. we advocate for semi-solid food. Things like porridge, things like plain yogurt. You can give plain yogurt. Um, things like uh, juices, which you've which you've blended. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can you upgrade from the very light meals to now at least thick. Then you progress, and the cons uh, uh, what is it called? The um, consistency of the food also mm. tends to progress, progress as the child also goes. So we like a stepwise process to prepare yes. now we're preparing so the... So from six months to about eight months you are able to juggle around with whatever you have. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're giving something like milk, the children who would who would love milk mm -hmm. but um, you also have to be very very keen when you're giving milk especially on the first few months or first few days mm -hmm. because some children will tend to diarrhea a lot when you're giving fresh milk mm -hmm. so we we advise mothers to mix a half like 50 50 of water and milk, milk. Mm -hmm. for the first few days yeah on the yogurt why why do we give plain because I think I feel like we have you know this the the we I think we don't even very few people actually buy the natural one yeah. to give to babies but most of us buy the vanilla the strawberry yeah. so why not that and why the natural one that is something mothers will never uh, open up but they tend to struggle a lot with children which have which have been introduced to flavored yogurts mm -hmm. so you tend to introduce a child to vanilla and they're going to choose vanilla more so this time you're giving the baby porridge will the baby will be like mm -mm. This they want the, the test of vanilla. This is not the test I want, and that is where this, the fight starts. Mister, uh, where yes. it happened, baby. And then that is why I said this is a very crucial moment or period because at the end of the day, after one year, the problem starts to manifest. You will always have a fight. With they want, child. and they prefer a one, yes. and they want that, and they don't want anything yes. else. So that is why we have to give anything plain or natural, just to ensure that you do not. 
um, make this baby have an opinion on what test they want to have. Okay, so when you're looking at now, the, when you, we, we are not trying to introduce now these foods, how should we give the food? Because uh, like the, we, can we, we do the spoon or can we just use a whole cup? And then we use, usually see that uh, there's this thing we, we usually, when, you are, when you're a mom, uh, there are so many things you're, you're usually encouraged to, to there's so many things being so, nearly sold out this for example there's this thing it's like a it's like a it's in the shape of like a, a just a fruit where you place a fruit and you you know you it's like it's like a mini blending of a fruit to a baby we have that and they encourage that to give to give to babies uh, the baby to suck on it there's that um uh, we can use can we use now this the spoon feeding or we can just use a cup at that age at that stage of the of the odini or feeding a child especially when it comes to it come out with something like uji which is a recommended one i'm a both are okay or we can also use just we are used to using bottles yeah. we are used to using bottles i'm just wrong. being honest <laughs> <laughs> that is wrong so we can't use bottles we even when you go to the major hospitals, like public institutions, you find large drawings of the bottles which are crossed. Mm -hmm. They are not encouraged. Um, the best way to give any child any food is using a cup and a spoon. That is what we advocate for. Okay. For the other question about the, the things that you put in fruits and mm -hmm. children have to suck alone, as much as I, I don't like what our mothers used to do when mm -hmm. it comes to winning mm -hmm. um there are things that you can borrow from them you see uh kitambo our parents somebody will just chop fruits and give you to just eat mm -hmm. the better mm -hmm. because now we have we have this in equipment that you've already put something in the level of infections that this child will collect because they always throw those things and they will pick them back up and maintaining the, the maintaining the situation mm. to to be very hygienic is very hard when you're using such things. Mm. So I advocate the child that cut two fruits, give the baby fruits and let them eat. So when it comes to the period, as I was saying, we said from six months to eight months, we give sol uh, semi-solid food, mm -hmm. mostly liquid at first, then you go as you progress. Mm -hmm. You can give porridge, like I said, you can give yogurt, you can give milk, yes. And then, uh, then the first few months, mm -hmm. we give two to three tablespoons of whatever you want to give your child. Just two to three spoons and probably just two servings and you, you have to breastfeed more. Mm -hmm. So you breastfeed first, then you give the, the food. Baby food. Mm. If you do it the other way around, the child will tend to refuse the breast milk. And we advocate for breastfeeding <laughs> for two months, two years. <laughs> so if you do the, if you do it the other way around, they are going to avoid breast milk. Mm. So that is why we want you to breastfeed first because there are still benefits from your breast from your breast milk so the first you breastfeed first then you can give a winning mm -hmm. as like a snack like two to three servings in a day in okay. a day yeah and then from eight months um this is where most parents go wrong you delay introducing the the solid foods because at this age if you if you watch your baby's milestone this is a stage that the baby can pick things and throw them in, in the, the mouth, mouth yeah. because they're trying to mm -hmm to to test and see uh, and explore mm -hmm. so at eight months you should be able to introduce solid foods if you don't and introduce them later on you're going to have trouble they trouble. will want they will be wanting the mashi mashi food they only. will always want mashi food and they will now progress backwards mm. is it progress or regress, regress backwards yeah. so even the solid foods they uh -uh. They want to be eating. Even they would, they will want uh, very light, very very light. Light foods. Yeah. Ah. And how would you encourage them? You know, I think we mess up basically when um, we look at our babies as you know too little, yeah. very delicate, and when they start picking and you know putting in their mouth, we actually how what what do you think actually? What do, what do parents do that actually makes them you know mess up when instead of encouraging the child to eat on their own actually? Uh, they do, you know, they tr I think feeding when they're trying to, I don't know if you get my point, they try to feed up the child. So it actually um, prevents the child from actually, you know, 
Yeah. I think that is one thing we do. I have done it. I have seen, <laughs> and actually our nannies do a lot, and we don't even tell our nannies that this is wrong, because you the only goal you have. What is your goal you have as a parent? You want your child to feed. So whatever means. I think that is where we we actually mess up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is how we act we develop picky eaters, or we encourage picky eaters, because at that age where we are starting to comp uh, we are starting complementary feeding. This child, we are supposed to encourage them to feed by themselves. So at this age, this stage of eight months, this is where we should really, really go hard on them being able to try things by themselves. Mm -hmm. So we advocate the, the baby or the mother to chop fruits or even carrots. To what size? To different shapes, different um, colors, so this encourages encourages them to find out um, to, the curiosity to find out what this is. Mm -hmm. If you put just yellow things there, the baby will not eat. And then now this is where you start forcing the child to eat. Oh, so Allah that, enough, that is the stage one. where you, know, you see parents. I wasn't that kind of parent, but you see parents, you know, doing the bear, the bear shape, you know, the cut, the whatever yes, in yes, their fruit. Yes, yes. And if let's say you give a, how when you're giving a plate to a child, you know, maybe you've done a complete or whatever, and the child decided to just eat the veggies. Is that okay, or we need to actually find a way of them eating that, or we can just encourage them to pick whatever they want to eat? Now, um, we I encourage family eating, mm -hmm. so we have to have meal times when while every, everybody is eating. Mm -hmm. This is also something that some practice that most people do. You find that the baby has its own. The feeding chair. Feeding time. Yeah. So the mtoto to kwa corner and they're With supposed the to chair. eat alone. <laughs> if you want your baby to have healthy eating, then it's good when you're starting to win this child. Make sure you also have something for you to eat. So this encourages the baby to mm -hmm. also eat. It. They will always do what the you're next doing, person is doing. doing. Uh -huh. So if you're only picking vegetables, mm -hmm. then the baby watch is going to do. So when you're sitting on a table sometimes, you know, kids are unrestly and you yeah. need your child to sit and, you know, what are the things you can, the kind of decision you can use, you know, to actually encourage your child to just eat on their own? Okay, uh, if I have understood your question, this is mostly encouraged by eating with them. Mm -hmm. Sitting with them and eating with them, this encourages them to eat. Mm -hmm. And if they have siblings, ensure mm -hmm. they are also eating at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can't uh, have your eight months old baby or 10 months old eating baby alone. eating alone and the sister is having fun outside them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> outside there, probably on the tablet mm -hmm. and this child is there. Mm -hmm. this, this is going to look like punishment. Mm -hmm. So the baby is not going to enjoy meal time. One thing Every I've, time they see meals, they don't want to fight. One thing I've struggled with, uh, I know this is a bit of topic, is uh, you find that um, if you like um, when I when a child you know we are used as parents when a child says no to food we just force the food in do you think that we are doing the wrong thing or doing the right thing because I feel like I I usually feel like I'm I, I can't do this because I'm violating my child's uh, my child's you know space. space and everything but at the same time he needs to eat so I've done it I think I did it once because he was ill and he, ne he needed to eat because I was going down so do you encourage that we just allow our kids to you know make the choice of when to eat and what to eat or we actually you know try to make them eat um again on meal time meal time is very very key whether the child is sick or unwell or well mm -hmm. so however we do not force children to eat because so, they, they, yeah, they, yeah, we stop. because anytime they will, they will be, run um, uh, every they time run <laughs> <laughs> so we do not really we want the child to be drived by their um, own um, hunger oh, to yeah. eat. It's yeah. okay. So what are, what are the some some health you know when we are a mom, when you're a mom when you you know you especially a person who likes to organize you know the kid eat in the morning ten twelve four you know is it good to follow a routine per se that is the first question second question what are the healthy snacks you can a person can give a child I, I know we like to give snacks around 10 and around 4 before now the actual meal yeah. mm -hmm. so
So there is no specific way that uh, I am going to say this is the right way that you're supposed to feed your child. Mm -hmm. However, because the energy requirements of this child have to be met. Mm -hmm. um, the first few months, like I said, six to eight months, mm -hmm. ensure the child is feeding like two to three times in mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, when the child is older, that's nine to about 12 months, mm -hmm. this child can feed even more. So four to five meals in a day. Mm, that, that now includes the large meals, which is breakfast, lunch and supper, and mm -hmm. then around 10 and four, mm -hmm. then you can have your healthy snacks there. So what examples? Um, healthy, <laughs> healthy snacks are anything that's healthy. You can have um chopped veget or chopped fruits you can give uh yogurt like you've said mm -hmm. you can give milk mm -hmm. you can give um fruit juices which is blended mm -hmm. yeah but then, um, do you recommend the flavored milks that there's usually a lot of flavored milk on this on yeah, the shelves yeah. you can give flavored milk to the to the babies no again when it comes to flavor they will tend to be very very uh, opinionated on on one particular flavor. So when should we start giving flavored things to the baby? Probably when they're older, like two years. Two years. Yeah. And when should we actually start giving sugar? I think sugar is always another topic. When should we start giving sugar to a baby? And then can we give, is tea recommended for babies or what do we give in the morning other than milk? You can give sugar mm -hmm. uh, because it's a source of energy. Okay. So yeah, you can give sugar. However, you have also to be very, very keen on the quantity of sugar mm, you, you, you're habit, putting yes. in mm. and then in the food mm -hmm. yes all right um uh so we've talked about uh, do you think there are any specific foods other than food a uh, food that uh, your child is allergic to that we should avoid during you know the the uh, inter any complementary feeding foods in our uh, foods which are very common and they should be avoided are things like honey mm -hmm. when the child is less than one year why uh because they'll can end up having botulism, though it's not oh, very, yeah, very yeah, common, yeah. but mm -hmm. it's good to just take caution. Mm -hmm. uh, things like eggs, because of uh, probably bacterial infections, so we don't really give eggs. So, when should, so also two years we start uh, on the honey and the yeah, eggs? You can't give past one year. Oh so yeah, yeah, okay. <coughs> so how can I ensure that my toddler is having like, you know, a balanced diet? <laughs> what should I put on the plate? Now, when it comes to your toddler, that is an older child, yeah? Uh, is, oh, um, I, I know most of us we do porridge, uh, mashed potatoes mostly. Like yes. just uh, from six months, how can we ensure okay. that they have? Like, I you always know? have a problem with mothers who just give ugali na supu ya nyama, ugali na supu ya samaki. See, uh, this child is not getting enough mm -hmm. like uh, it's supposed to get. Probably they're growing, so they need a lot of energy. They need a lot of proteins. Mm -hmm. So it is always good to blend out uh, meals. Wakati, mm -hmm. um, you're starting to win. Apo my eight months, seven months, you can. You always have to ensure that your meal is balanced. Mm -hmm. When you're giving mashed foods, ensure you have a protein. You have a vegetable. You can put in soft vegetables like mchicha. Uh, you can add spinach things like spinach is yeah. very very tender. Mm -hmm. So you can have those as your vegetables. You can have mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. mashed uh, sweet potatoes. You can have um, beef, mm -hmm. minced meat. You can have. You can blend your liver. You can. At least this child is able to get a bit of proteins, a, a bit, bit of, of uh, carbohydrates and vegetables. vegetables. That is the best way to ensure that your child is having a balanced, balanced diet. diet. Okay. Other than that, what do you think are the mistakes we make as parents uh, during now the complementary feeding? Introducing meals very late, mm -hmm. or introducing meals very very early, mm -hmm. uh, giving. Begusaba and begutano, that is a no. <laughs> um, something else is giving the flavored foods and having a specific time for this child to eat without the rest of the mm -hmm. members of the family. Mm -hmm. At one year, your child should be able to sit with you at the table and eat from his own plate. I think what we do, we, we give the baby food first and then we eat as a family. I think that yes. is the mistake. That we is do another mostly. mistake that you always have. The best way is to have this child eating with the rest of the family. Mm -hmm. um, some other mistake really we make 
Um, really, I don't think there's something that I'm not captured. Okay, so um, sometimes we make these mistakes and we end up with a toddler who's now a picky eater. Now, yes. what do you think we can do? With, like, what can you recommend on someone who's having like a picky eater? Like at the moment? Yeah. Okay. Picky eaters, huh? they're always from way before, mm -hmm. from six months when you're introducing complementary feeding. That is where you are developing a picky eater or person who is able to eat well by themselves. Mm -hmm. So picky eaters always encourage encourage meal time. Mm -hmm. That is eating with them, minimize distractions, the TVs, uh, other kids playing around or giving. As much as it's very very it's it's enticing, mm -hmm. it's very wrong for you to entice them with food with 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 a gift after they eat. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen children who throw away food and hide and act like they've eaten. eaten. So at the end of the day, they're going to get their treat, but they didn't eat mm -hmm. as it's supposed to be. And children can be very cheeky. Mm -hmm. picky eaters can be very cheeky. Is there a way that you feel like we can make meal time fun other than, you know, doing the shops and everything? Or we, can, or we just have to make the meal time creative or how can we make it, you know, fun for our babies? It has to be creative. It has to be thought of. Again, encouraging these children who are picky eaters in meal preparation, mm -hmm. in meal choices, mm -hmm. and uh, breaking monotony. Sometimes you can you can have um, different foods, mm -hmm. not our normal ugali, skuma, and nyama. But that is, so. well, that is what most. <laughs> ah, that is what most. But I discovered with my son, like um, if we like, he, he he eats when the food is cooked differently. If you, yes. you can eat rice today. If you cook, if you cook tomorrow veg rice, you will eat. Yes. But if you cook rice, 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 hey, exactly. It's going and to look at that plate. It has to be creative. <laughs> it has to be well thought of, mm -hmm. uh, with the best of the, uh, the best interest of that child at heart. Okay. If you just cook for the interest of the whole of bora bora to mumi kula. We cook it's going like, to be boring. Kenyans, we cook like that. Yes. Mama, we eat ugali every day. It has. It doesn't have to be very expensive. Just has to be spontaneous, like different things, mm -hmm. different times. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, if maybe someone wants to reach out to you, maybe uh, on a consult, or maybe they're having a child, you know, we it's a challenge we, we have, and maybe most of us don't even have, you know, this information. We just move away as we go. We ask other mothers, we ask our, our mothers, who, you know, we usually ask one another, and I think that most of us actually just rely on what we've seen our parents do and our friends yeah. do. So how can someone actually reach to you and where can someone actually get all this information if they need to look into it? Well, uh, you can reach out to my DM. We have a joint Instagram page. It's mm -hmm. called We Win. Um, so check us out there. Uh, I am with my colleague who does a good job also. So that is one place that you can reach out or you can hit me up on 0717-260-889. All right. Uh, so if there's one advice you'll give a mother who's actually starting out the journey, uh, what is the one thing that you will just want to tell them like randomly? <laughs> Don't listen to my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> have someone you can call or talk to your pediatrician talk to your nutritionist, ask something, just ask random questions. As However stupid it may sound, I've seen people who express breast milk and put it in porridge. So that's what I asked. Yeah. <laughs> it's I have that's seen thin. it. So ah. kindly reach out to somebody who is who has gone to school and done something to do with nutrition. As much as uh, however stupid your question may sound, just reach out okay because if you ask anyone if you ask person a and person b outside they will ha always have their different opinions they, because they're giving you based on their own experience their own and actually like i think be, uh, different babies have different you know yeah yes so winnie thank you for coming thank you for giving us your time we do appreciate and uh, thank you for being here with us as always uh uh, you can like the video, subscribe, share, share, keep on sharing, uh, and also you can uh, give us comments on you know your journey as uh, you know during uh, your journey with your child uh, during uh, during the complementary feeding, and always thank you.